Today we're going to take a look at the AYN Odin 2 Pro. Let's get to it! The AYN Odin 2 is an Android-based handheld gaming device. It has a 6-inch display. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 CPU that runs at 1.5 GHz, and it has 12 gigs of LP DDR5 RAM. A couple of items worth calling out. The 6-inch IPS touchscreen display runs at a resolution of 1920x1080. It has a micro SD card slot, and it has an 8000 milliamp battery in here that advertises upwards of 8 hours of game time. For ports, we're looking at a USB-C, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and HDMI. It supports Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 7, and all of this weighs in at just 420 grams. First off, let's talk about the UBI. For folks who are unfamiliar with what a newbie is, it's the out-of-box experience you have from the time you take the device out of its packaging up to the point where you can actually use the device for its core purpose or for what it was advertised as. The out-of-box experience for the Odin 2 was straightforward. It's a customized Android setup experience, and it streamlines everything into a handful of easy-to-interact-with screens. It came in a sturdy box that's not too much bigger than the device itself. Our unit also came with an instruction card and a USB charging cable. It booted right up, and we were at the main screen in about two minutes. Before we get to the rest of the video, I want to mention our Patreon. As a subscriber, you'll be listed as a producer of our content. You'll also get access to our custom game cover art that we've put together over the years. You'll likely see it in action in some of our videos. This art works great with custom launchers and really goes a long ways in making a digital game collection look awesome. So click on the link below, head on over to our Patreon, and become a producer today. Okay, back to the video. The first thing we noticed when we picked up the device was that it felt solid, which is the same thing that we said about the original Odin. We picked up the clear purple model, and its surface is smooth, though not so much that it's slippery. There's no creaks or rattles to be found here either. Everything feels pretty solid. The button layout is fairly standard for a handheld this size. On the front, we have a D-pad, A, B, X, Y buttons, start back buttons, a home button, and a back button. There's a volume rocker up top on the right, just to the left of the power button. The shoulder buttons and triggers are up top and remind us more of those found on a Rogue Ally than anything else. There's a nice space between them that makes it easy to tell where your finger is. The shoulder buttons are nice and clicky, and the triggers have just the right amount of resistance. There's two extra buttons on the back. When holding the Odin 2 normally, they fall just inside of where our middle fingers rest, so they're easy to reach, but also not going to get accidentally pressed. The micro SD slot is up top on the left, and is also where our only real complaint is, because it's hard to get the cover off. So hard, in fact, that we had a chipped fingernail mishap. Also up top is the HDMI port. The USB-C port is on the bottom right next to the headphone jack. The D-pad feels just about right. Not too clicky, not too mushy. It's on the small side, but that doesn't stop you from getting a good smash roll out of it. The A, B, X, Y buttons are also a bit on the small side, but they have decent spacing, making it easy to tell which is which. Sticking with the theme of things that are a bit on the small side, the thumbsticks are small but kind of great. They're not so tall that they get in the way of the A, B, X, Y buttons, and they feel really nice. The select and start buttons are near the top of the screen and are pretty easy to reach. Same goes for the home and back buttons down near the bottom of the screen. The folks over at ASUS building the next Rogue Ally can take some design cues from this. The volume rocker is slightly raised above the surface, but a little valley around it makes it easy to tell where you are without looking, and there's nice button feedback when pressed. In a very nice design decision, the power button is slightly concave, which makes it really easy to tell when you've found it. Compared to the original Odin, the shoulder buttons have a very slight wobble, but not so much that they make sound if you shake the device. They're easy to reach and have nice, clicky feedback when pressed. The triggers are also an improvement over the original Odin, and feel almost identical to those on the Rogue Ally. The 6-inch IPS display is excellent. Nothing looks washed out, and in some games, the colors really pop. There's a brightness slider which covers all your day and nighttime scenarios quite well. At full brightness, games look downright beautiful. The sound is dual speaker based, and it's surprisingly good for a handheld. They can get loud as needed, but if there's a criticism to be made here, it's that some of the steps are too drastic. There's 15 sound levels from top to bottom, and somewhere around 5 to 6 does a step that goes from slightly too loud to slightly too quiet. We picked up the translucent purple model, and everything about it looks great. Overall, the design decisions here are excellent, and they've addressed everything that we are critical of with the original Odin.
Out of the box, there are two experiences that you can pick for your UI. The Odin launcher, or a standard Android experience. AYN includes their own launcher here, and it's pretty much all someone might need if they're not interested in directly launching emulated games. You can navigate it entirely with a controller, though there's a little jank here and there when you bring up the flyout menus. It groups things into four categories, games, entertainment, productivity, and system apps. And it's easy to add and install an app to any of these categories. Select the plus sign, then select an app from the list that pops up, and that's that. It'd be nice to be able to change the names of the categories, but currently there's no option to do so. So we ended up putting our emulators in entertainment and our streaming apps in productivity. The layout option resizes the icons on the screen, and you can change the wallpaper. You can long press app icons to bring up a few extra options, but that's about it for customization. The only way to get from category to category is to bring up the flyout menu, and we're still not sure how we feel about this. It seems like going to the top or the bottom of an app list should switch categories as well. Overall though, this is a perfectly fine experience. If all you're doing with the Odin 2 is playing native Android games, or you prefer to launch emulated games directly from the emulator itself, then the Odin launcher will absolutely get you by. But this is Android 13, so you have options. You can navigate the vanilla Android UI pretty well with a controller, but touch will get you the most mileage. The top swipe down menu is all touch driven, but most other places, like settings, are controller friendly. There's a subsection in settings specifically for Odin. From here, you can do things like adjust rumble strength, toggle lighting, switch controller style from BAYX to ABXY, calibrate the controllers, enable the virtual mouse, and a few more things. You can also remap those back buttons from here, but the options are limited, so we left them disabled. The last thing worth calling out here is the flyout menu. While gaming, you can swipe out from the right of the screen to bring up a quick menu. There's some useful perf monitors here and some gaming focus toggles like screenshots and recording, but the most useful item here is the key adapter. There's a guide available from here too that explains this all in depth, but the TLDR is that this lets you map the controller to screen gestures and touch points. Your mileage is going to vary from game to game depending on the complexity of the touch controls needed, but for the most part, if there's an on-screen overlay, this can map to it. If we had to summarize gaming on the AYN Odin 2 in a word, it would be satisfying. The Odin 2 handles everything from native Android games all the way up through Switch emulation and everything in between. Let's hit some of the big topics here. Native Android games still have a lot to be desired if you're coming from a PC or console gaming perspective, but there are some great gaming experiences to be had here. We want to point out that you can use touchscreen for gaming here, but depending on the control scheme and the size of your hands, reaching over the hardware on the Odin 2 might be a bit cumbersome. Games that have proper gamepad support are going to be where the Odin 2 really shines. We played the Android native versions of Chrono Trigger, Diablo Immortal, Final Fantasy 3, Oceanhorn, Titan Quest, and Vampire Survivors. Playing these games on the Odin 2 was easily as good as any of their console counterparts. The controls worked great, and performance was excellent. The experience here made us wish that more PC and console games would launch on Android with proper controller support. Streaming was also good. We do a lot of in-home console streaming from our Xbox Series consoles, and this is one of the best experiences that you can have in the handheld space. The modern Wi-Fi support here really makes it feel like you have an Xbox right in the palm of your hands at times. And cloud streaming was also just as impressive. There's little to no artifacting or compression issues. Emulation was equally as impressive. We tried a decent range of systems, from Atari 2600, to Super Nintendo, to N64, to Game Boy Advance, to PlayStation, to PlayStation 2, to PSP, and even some Switch. Your mileage is going to vary with some of the higher end games like Switch emulation, but we logged several hours in Animal Crossing, Let's Go Pikachu, and Pokemon Arceus and the only hiccups we hit were shaders being compiled. Otherwise, if a game ran, it ran pretty good. And that last bit is the core of our emulation experience on the Odin 2. If a game is marked OK in an emulator, then it generally ran good here. A great example is Dante's Inferno on PSP. This game is notoriously tricky to get running smoothly, but here it just worked. As a matter of fact, this is the best that we've seen Dante's Inferno run and look. All in all, gaming on the AYN Odin 2 rivaled some of the top dogs, like the Steam Deck and the Rogue Ally, in a couple of instances. If PC and console games routinely released Android counterparts, this would be a nearly perfect portable. In our testing, we saw incredible battery life here. 
we played Animal Crossing for 6 hours and still had 18% battery life left. On the other end of the scale, we played Pokemon Fire Red for 3 hours and still had 87% battery life left. This is easily the best battery life that we've seen in a handheld device to date, because those numbers even rival or probably beat the Steam Deck OLED. So what's missing from the AYN Odin 2? If we're talking just Android here, then there's nothing really missing. They've added everything you could have asked for in an Android handheld. But if we're talking gaming in general, then you're limited to Android games, emulation, and cloud streaming, because big gaming releases generally don't have an Android counterpart. This is by no means the fault of the Odin 2, it's just how the industry is. But this handheld makes the case that maybe that needs to change. We would have liked to have seen a USB-C port on the top of the device along with the one that's already on the bottom. Depending on your setup, this could be limiting if you have it plugged in while playing, especially in some docks. We also would have liked to have seen a bit more customization in the Odin launcher itself. Without the ability to rename or create categories, you kind of have to shoehorn things into places that maybe they don't fit. Alright, so what are my final thoughts on the AYN Odin 2? I'm going to front load this section by saying that this is the best Android handheld gaming device to date. I'll even go as far as saying that in games that support a controller, this is the best way to game on Android, period. They've done so much right here that it almost feels criminal to go too hard on any of their efforts on the device, because it's rare to see something this well thought out. Having said that, there is a downside to the Odin 2, but it's no fault of the device itself. It's the limitation of the operating system. Android isn't a platform that sees a lot of proper core games released on it. There's Android versions of a lot of games, like say Call of Duty Mobile, but they're often mobile variants of the mainline game, and not the real deal, so to speak. And this isn't a knock on mobile gaming. It's just calling out that if you want to play a well-known IP here, you're either going to have to settle for the mobile variant, or you'll have to stream play it in some fashion. But if you're looking for a device to get the best out of what Android gaming has to offer, then look no further. This is it. It's a premium device at a fair price. The base model starts at $299, and the Pro model is currently $369, which is $20 more than a Steam Deck LCD. But what you gain over a Steam Deck with an Odin 2 is portability and a true native Android experience. It's in Switch Lite territory for portability, and while an Android experience might not be a selling point for everyone, for those interested, this is as good as it gets. The Odin 2 crushes emulation, and it's going to easily handle any native Android game that you throw at it, but you're going to have the best experience if that game is designed to be played horizontally and supports a gamepad. The AYN Odin 2 is the new bar by which all other Android handhelds should be measured. So if you're in the market for a premium Android gaming device, this is it. You've made it to the final boss. And that about wraps things up. Please like this video if you found it useful, and subscribe to our channel if you want more content like this. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and we'll chat again soon.